Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, wherever you are. We hope you're having a great day. I'm Rick Zanotti, and today we're going to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart. I love microphones. So we're going to talk about microphones and, in particular, blue microphones. And we're going to be introducing Hillary in a moment. But first, here is Colleen Sunley, our co-host. Hey, Colleen, how are you this morning? Hey, Rick. Good morning, and hi to everyone. Uh, good day, wherever you are. I know we have folks in Australia and Belgium joining us, so good day wherever you are. And as Rick said, we are very excited that Blue Microphone's here with us today. We've been getting a lot of questions in the past, and so we thought maybe we can get the opportunity to have someone come in and uh, you know answer those qu burning questions you have about microphones. That's true. And, and for those who don't know, if you look at our rigs and what we've got here, we're, we're basically mic geeks. Yeah. yeah, we like mics. Mics are good. And um, joining us today is Hillary Money. She is the manager of PR and events with Blue Microphone. So, Hillary, hey, how are you today? Good morning. Hi. So, and actually, Hillary and I are almost neighbors. We're we're not far from each other, company wise. She's she's about a couple cities away from us, which is about probably ten miles. Yeah. So it's good morning to us. Good morning to us. This is good. So, Hillary, tell us what's going on that's great at Blue. Well, we are excited. Um, just most recently, we have um, a couple new products that um, launched or are launching along with kind of um, a growth and popularity and a lot of great feedback on some of our current lineup and things are just moving and shaking over here. So we are excited to be here with you guys this morning to talk about that and kind of hear the feedback from your audience and their questions and it's kind of what we've got going on here. That sounds great. Well, you know, it, it's interesting. Our, our audience targets mostly trainers, e-learning people, people involved many times in voiceover uh, or they'll either do their own or they'll, they'll hire talent to do it. But I, I get a lot of questions all the time and I think Colleen probably does too about what kind of mics do you use? What kind of mics do you recommend? that don't cost a fortune but have a really good sound. That, that sometimes sounds like a tough combo, but you guys have done a great job of, of putting together a good lineup of fairly, actually, I'd say really well-priced mics for the quality you get. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and part of that comes from um, just a brief history. We have been making very high-end studio mics for almost two decades. So that's where we started was in $5,000 very pro microphones with a whole range of of sonic signatures for singers or instruments and, and kind of different flavors of music. And about six years ago, we took that studio knowledge and brought it down to USB because there's no reason that you can't take that studio sound and bring it to the consumer as garage band started opening up and people started doing music recording and voiceover recording straight from their computers. So that's kind of the philosophy of where that line came from. Yeah, that's true. And and I've seen the uh, one of the expensive mics she's talking about is called the bottle and the blue bottle. And it's a gorgeous looking microphone. It's about four to five thousand, but mm -hmm. it has removable capsules. So you can put in what is it like seven capsules? I think there's nine. Nine total. capsules. And you know, it's one of those things everybody wants, but you gotta really have a need for it. Uh, but then on the other end, you've got mics ranging from about fifty bucks all the way on up to let's say five, seven hundred, or fifteen hundred bucks, depending on whatever you want. I'd say in the voice range, you've got just about every mic covered. Yeah, we have everything from your simplest plug-and-play CD quality, mess with nothing, um, up to Yeti and Yeti Pro, which allow you to do some feature functions, some or some studio functions such as gain and, and polar patterns and all of that directly on the mic. So it's really the level of features that you want um, for your home studio if you're starting out or if you're growing. Um, we kind of have the whole range. Yeah, and, and for those who don't know what a Blue Yeti is, it's probably, I'd say it's probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular USB mic out there. I've recommended it to a lot of people. I know at least probably 20, 30 people have bought it. Um, that, that I've talked to directly. And what I like about it is for, and I think I got it for like 107 bucks when it was on Amazon for that price. I think it's even cheaper now. And you just go, wow, I get, I get four mics in one for really cheap money. And even better, the quality is great. 
And, and by yeah, the way, we're not, we're Yeti not doing is one a, of our most popular for sure. Yeah, and by the way, for all those who are watching, we're not doing a commercial for Blue. We actually really like the Blue product line, so this mm -hmm. is good. They're not paying us to do this. <laughs> so. Good. We just, we just like fans. We're just sharing the message. Yeah, we're sharing the message. So is the Blue Yeti one of the most popular that you've got? It is. Um, it is for several reasons. Snowball, it kind of is a tie with Snowball as far as um, – popularity and and kind of what's out in the market so i don't know if you can see but with snowballs what we started out with um was our very first usb mic and snowball is just plug and play if you want to bring that up a little bit to the center yeah. right about there now we can see it perfect in front of me um so snowball was our first one about five years ago um and it is your plug and play usb mic um works with both pc and mac and and I can pretty much say any recording program um, that will accept USB audio. And Snowball features two condenser capsules in here, which give you kind of a more depth of field when you're recording. It also has three settings that allow you to record just in front, so which is great for um, one vocalist or voiceover or Skype call. It'll allow you to also do a setting that puts a 10 dB pad. So if you put a cushion over the mic, um, so I always say either for screaming guitar or if you're shouting and your voiceover need to be loud and you don't want to override the mic, you can do that setting. It also will do omni. So say you have more than one person, it will capture everyone all the way around the mic from a chorus to a conference call to multiple people needing to be on one voiceover or narrative. And that is Snowball. So that's our $100 kind of... I would say middle of the line because we have some below and some above that. Um, it's just plug and play. Those are the only features on Snowball. And then we came out with Yeti, um, I think three years ago. Has been I think it's long. about three years old. I think it's even less. Less? Two? To come out well, with it maybe in... Maybe two? I'm maybe it came out in 2010. It, it might be, right. it it might just... be two years old. But yeah, it was, it was great. And the shape is so cool. Yeah, so uh, this is Yeti for those. I'm sure you've seen it on them can't talk this is the front um so yeti does exactly what um snowball does it's the same capsules but like you said it provides four mics in one which is essentially four patterns um so for voiceover artists that wants it right in front like i'm doing now there's the cardioid you also have stereo which is right and left um for voice that is great for getting a more natural room sound you don't maybe want that warm rich direct but you kind of want an airy room sound more natural for musicians you get that right and left channel where you hear a guitar in your right ear or your left ear mm -hmm. it also will do omni all the way around and it will do bi-directional so say you want to do someone sitting in front of the mic someone sitting behind the mic it will capture just front and back for a, a duet an interview um, if you just have those two people and you don't want to put it on omni so yeti offers like you said essentially four Polar patterns or, or mic patterns in one mic. And it's yeah. also USB direct plug and play for Yeti. And I think what people would be surprised at is, again, and that's about $100, right? Um, it, it should retail for closer to $150. $150. You can find it on sale occasionally, so about like the $100, $107 price that you found it at. Okay. Um, but don't be surprised if, if people find it for about $150 because that's what our... Um, I was just saying, on Amazon, it usually sells for about 100 right now. So it's, they've really got it. Cheap. So that's probably about the cheapest you can find is Amazon, as far as I've mm -hmm. seen for for the uh, the Blue Yeti. It's it's worth every penny. So, right you know, now I see Amazon has the Yeti, the Blue, for one hundred eight seventy six. One hundred eight. So that's about that's about what I paid for it, and that was mm -hmm. about two years ago. But the um, Yeti Pro <clears throat> is two forty nine on Amazon. Yeah, and yes. oh, for for those who are interested, the Yeti Pro is the latest incarnation of the Yeti, and it adds. I believe it does USB and um, XLR. XLR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of the um, consumer USB meets Pro. So either if you need the versatility of being able to take it into a studio um, or you want to kind of future-proof your setup um, to where you eventually maybe add a mixer or an interface into right. your computer for a little bit more of that XLR studio versatility, Yeti Pro will do both USB and XLR in now, one mic. Is there any difference in sound or are they still basically the same mics and everything? Basically the same. It's the same capsules. Okay. The only quality difference you can get with Yeti Pro is Yeti will do 
um, 16-bit 48K, which for audio files, that's essentially just CD quality mm -hmm. audio. Yeti Pro can go up to four times that. Wow, okay. Um, 24-bit, 192 kilohertz. And so an example I always give is you have a 2-megapixel camera, which takes great pictures for you, and the projects you do, it works great. Or you can take it to an 8-megapixel camera just for that higher detail and, and resolution. That's what Yeti Pro can do. That's pretty good. And it's not that expensive. No. Two, no what you say, two, it should be really around, good. yeah, 249 250 yeah. And by the way, for all of you guys who want a professional quality microphone, if you get something like the Blue Yeti, and, and let's say you want to do the XLR just because you think it's cool, and it is, um, but you don't have anything but USB ports, you can actually get the Blue Icicle, which mm -hmm. allows you to right. connect... XLR to a USB port. So therefore, you can take whatever mic you have, whether it's a high-end professional one or a lower-end, you know, cheaper USB one, and connect it in, and you've now got a little portable recording studio mm -hmm. with you at any time. And uh, the Blue Icicle, what does that sell for? That's like 60, 70 bucks? Um, I think it's, yeah, somewhere between, somewhere between 55 and 65. <clears throat> okay, so that's real reasonable. And, and again, that lets you connect up any XLR microphone. And for those of you who aren't familiar with it, let me see, I think I have one here. Uh, let's see, amidst my cable mess here. What, do you um, need a cable, Rick? Yeah, you know what, I don't, this is not an Oh, I have one, here's the, here's the cords of Yeti. So this would be an XLR connection. There you go, it's a little three-prong connection. They come male, female, usually. Um, and that's what you tie in usually to any kind of professional audio system. Right. So like Colleen and I, for example, are both on Mackie mixers and we've got our mics with the XLR. So it's it's a great way to to connect high end mics and it's also a very well shielded cable, which is why everybody uses them. And mm -hmm. and they're great. But you know what, the XLR mics sound almost as good nowadays, and that's the beauty of it. You're bringing professional audio down to just about anyone's level. And yeah. and now, for people-wise, this is a question that we get asked a lot. For example, if they want to buy any one of your USB mics, are there any differences or any choices for a higher female voice versus a lower male voice? No, USB line, no. They're pretty all versatile. We tried to cap capture kind of that that rich mid-range um, captures some of the depths of the lows, some of the brightness of the highs, but it pretty much sits in the middle. Um, we do have a signature line um, of pro mics where we have the Dragonfly, which I think is upwards of a thousand, um, and the Blueberry, which do specialize. The capsules are made to to really bring out the highs for females, whereas our mouse catches a really nice warm low and is great for, for deep male um, broadcast or vocals. So we have specialized those in our studio line, um, but for our USB line, it pretty much is versatile across the board um, and should suit your purposes. Um, but we do offer, like I said, up, up in the studio line more, it's called our signature series because it's a specific sonic signature that highlights either a really present mid-range or those shimmering highs or the deep lows. So we offer it, but not kind of in our sub-200 USB line. That's great. Yeah, one, of, one of my favorite voiceover talents, Perry Norton up in Santa Barbara, she uses uh, the blue mic almost. I think that's her favorite one. She uses that a lot. And I'm trying to remember, uh, it's about a $1,500 one. And, mm -hmm. oh, what is it? I'm trying to remember which one it was. Do you remember what it looks like? I can usually point yeah, them out. Yeah, I've seen it. It's, it's, ah, uh, darn. Again, I can't remember the name. Yeah, I think it has a bird name. Um, either Bluebird. Bluebird, that's what she's got. Bluebird. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's about That is just right above our, our spark. So kind of in our versatile essential series, I think it's 300. No, no, she's um, got so one that still was... in that sort of affordable range no, if you want to go into. She's got a different one then because it's about 1500 what you paid for it. Oh, then. It, the and it sounds great. Well, she's got a great voice, too, but it sounds really good. So that was my plug for Perry Norton, voiceover talent Santa Barbara. <laughs> yeah, Go she's, Blue. She's a doll. Go Blue. Yeah, and then our friends over at Adobe, they all use Blue. Actually, they do. Yeah. Um, I think almost all of them have uh, mm -hmm. Yetis. Yeah. What's, um... Alan Partridge. Um, mm -hmm. These are the, um, the Adobe e-learning evangelists that we work with. 
And uh, just about every one of them has a blue mic of one yeah, kind Pooja, or another. I know Pooja has one. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah, and I hate to say it, but I think I recommended it. So they're pretty happy with them. Yeah, you recommended you. it to me as well, Rick. Yeah, when, that when was I your did. very first mic. Mm-hmm. I think it was your first mic. It was. So I have a question um, mm-hmm. in the chat room. VoiceOver is, gro- is a growing need in corporate e-learning. Which mic is best right now with the blue mic? Well, that's kind of a, a wide answer, and I'll try to break it down by features. So essentially, anywhere from our Snowball up to maybe our $200 XLR Spark with the Icicle, like you said, that will take XLR to USB, it depends on the feature set you need. So if you're not really an audiophile and you want to just plug and play, Snowball will suit your needs. It's CD quality. It's the same capsules that are in Yeti and Yeti Pro. So you're getting the same quality across the board from Snowball to Yeti Pro. As far as capsule quality goes, like I said, Yeti Pro will do a higher resolution. So if you want that super high resolution, which is also a very large file, then you can go up to Yeti Pro. The differences are on Yeti and Yeti Pro, like I said, between the four polar patterns or the mics. Um, You also have direct monitoring, which means you can plug in headphones and hear directly what's going into the mic without any delay through the computer. It also allows you to adjust gain, which is your mic sensitivity. So you can, as you're listening, okay, I need to turn it up or turn it down, depending on how loud the speaker is, how close they are to the mic. Um, And also we'll do a mute button, so you can mute it directly on the mic. So if you need a quick pause, if you have to cough, if you need to switch to another speaker and have yours completely muted, both Yeti and Yeti Pro will do that. Then you go up into Spark, which is our entry-level studio mic, uh, and it has a larger capsule than our USB that will capture a little bit more fidelity, a little more clarity. It's just a larger capsule, so you're just moving up the line as far as, as clarity and quality goes. Which is kind of a catch-22 because a lot of people are are perfectly, perfectly happy and, and Yeti and Yeti Pro and Snowball suit their professional needs. And then some people like the kind of the warm richness of the larger capsule and the XLR. Um, so it's really just kind of what your needs are as far as feature function goes. I hope yeah. that answered the question. Yeah, and if you're, if you're going to build a professional studio, and a lot of people we know want to build little, little, I guess, mini studios inside their offices or somewhere in their companies... I'd go with the XLR line if, if you really want to have that really nice quality and the warmth of, of like, like Hillary said, the capsules and, and how well those things sound. But if you want to do it on a budget or you're just doing voiceover here and there, then the, the Yeti or the, mm-hmm. the Snowball are great choices. Any one of those are, are great choices. I think the Spark you said is the one that's about $200? Yeah, Spark yeah. is 200 I had a chance to test that one. It actually has a really nice, rich sound. Um, yeah, and the, and the cool thing about Spark is, especially if you're starting out in studio, say you want to go above USB and you're starting out your studio and you're not quite sure what kind of studio mic you want, we've developed Spark with um, a feature called the focus control. And it's a little button on the back, which re- what it does is it actually changes, I'll get real technical real quick, um, the voltage going to the capsule. So it's not rolling off, it's not fixing any of the signal afterwards, it's actually changing what it captures. So what it will do in focus off, it's very bright, it's very present, it's very big. With focus on, it's a little more warm, a little more direct, a little more rich. So you can kind of figure out, okay, do I want a mic that's a little brighter, maybe if I move up the line, or you know, proceed to buy more studio mics, or do I need something that's a little richer? What sounds better for my voice and for the project that I'm doing? So Spark allows you that learning versatility as you climb up into studio mics and more higher end. Hey, one thing we haven't talked about, which is another thing people are getting really into, is the line of, and I know you guys have the the Mikey, which goes into iPhones and I think iPads, um, yep. or iOS devices on the whole. Um, how are those doing right now? Um, very well. So uh, really exciting. We have um, Mikey, like you said, which is very plug and play. And I actually have one right here. And I don't know where it is right now, but it's um, direct plug and play um, right into iPad, iPhone, iPod, iPod Touch. And that is the same capsules that are in Snowball and Yeti. And they're set in stereo. So there's two of them in there. So you get a wide range. It connects right to the dock of your iPhone or your iPad. Uh, it has three settings, so you can put it on very sensitive gain. So 
if you're maybe doing an interview in a quiet room, it has automatic in the middle if you're not sure kind of what your varying volume levels are going to be. And it also has super loud. So say you're at a trade show floor doing an interview or you're at a rock concert and you're recording. Um, Mikey has that versatility. And then more exciting, um, in about a month, we're going to be releasing Spark Digital. So I was talking about Spark, which is our entry-level studio mic. We've actually made a digital version of that. Interesting. That that will plug into USB and any, well, I can't say any, but um, iPad. So it's a 30-pin connection to iPad. So it will do both into your computer with that. Without Spark and Icicle, we've now made Spark Digital right into USB nice. or into your iPad. So if you're doing it on the go or if you're doing voiceovers with an iPhone, you can use Mikey for iPhone and iPad uh, for iPad or USB Spark Digital. Yeah, and for all those who have iPhones and iPads, it is an amazing portable studio. You put in a good mic, like a blue mic on it, and it sounds pretty mm -hmm. darn good. No. Uh, and in fact, one thing, people ask, what kind of software should I buy? I, I use on the iPad and the uh, the iPhone, the Blue Fire. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the best sound recorder I found for for iPhone. It is great. Not only do you see the waveform while you're recording, which is mm -hmm. beyond cool, because at least you know exactly what's happening. Um, it's just really clean, and it's got built-in compressor, limiter, gate. We can get technical, but it just makes your sound awesome. I mean, you could buy a Zoom H2N or something like that, but if you already have a phone and you just add the uh, the software plus, uh, what is it, a $50 Mikey or something, you've got almost the same quality, if not better, than a two, three, four hundred dollar dedicated device. So, and you just yes. saved, you saved a couple hundred bucks. And that's the uh, that's the blue fire, and it's available on an I, on the iTunes store, and it's free. That's yes. true, but then you can upgrade, and the upgrade is well worth it. I think it was like a twenty dollar upgrade, very mm -hmm. well worth it for the uh, for the pro version of it. There's a mid range one too. We worked with um, Audiophile Engineering, and they have what's what's called Fire, and they adapted Blue Fire for us. So yeah, our free version, and then um, they have a couple upgrades. Um, that add more features mm -hmm. uh, that they support for somewhere I think between ten and then maybe one above that. Yeah, yeah, it's a, they're yeah. they're worth it too. It was, the sound quality is great. In fact, I think Colleen recently went to one of the big trade shows in in e learning or training ICE, and were you using you were using your iPad to do recording? Yeah, I used my iPod, iPad to do all the interviews and all the recording. But at the time, I believe I connected. A USB mic using one of those USB uh, hubs, to XLR adapters. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, Hillary, just a moment ago, you mentioned uh, the mic with that. Uh, I believe it's the digital one you were mentioning a little while ago. Mm -hmm. The Spark Digital. Spark Digital. Spark Digital. Yeah, and you t talked about the functionality with the iPad. Now, I've been in the last couple of days reading rumors because you know they're flying left and left and right now about the new iPad and the iPhone. And that they're going to come out with a smaller pin uh, adapter for the charger. Um, so that's one of the rumors that that's flying around right now. So how is that going to? So how is that going to impact the um, this 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 the the microphone Spark you're digital? talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like everyone else who's making iPhone products, we've been um, keeping track of those rumors as well. And for Spark Digital, um, should that happen, and, and it's just a rumor, um, we would look into adapting. It's it's easier with Spark Digital. They're separate cords. Mm -hmm. um, so should it be a rumor, uh, I can't speak for R&D team, but mm -hmm. to be able to provide to our customers, should that come about, we would definitely look into adapting a cord for right. for the future iOS devices. And, and what... what traditionally happens is anytime there's a new cable or anything there's always an adapter cable that somebody belkin or somebody else comes out with so you mm -hmm. usually don't have a problem yeah because i think they're talking about moving from a 30 30 pin to 19 pin it's because they can mm -hmm. yes and then all of us making <laughs> their iOS bothersome yes. accessories and just, are gonna adapt just, just to be gonna bothersome to. right well yeah, yeah. So, Rick, you know, let's chat a little bit about some of the other peripheral stuff that you can buy for your microphones. And, for example, the pop filter. I have a blue pop filter here with me, and I can hold it up so that um, folks watching the show can see. And maybe Hillary can chat a little bit about 
you know, what the pop filter is for. I know we've talked about it at length, but maybe uh, she can share her knowledge of the pop filter. Yeah, so a pop filter, for those who may not be familiar, is a screen like she's like she showed you that goes over your mic. So if you're going to be really up close on it, um, it catches those things called plosives. So which is your P's and you get that in your, in your mic or your syllable, syllable, syllable. I'm going to mess that word up. The S's, Excellent. the S's and the P's. Um, and what that does is help shield the capsule and the mic from, from getting those, those high frequencies or, or the direct kind of blow of air into your mic. Um, for more smooth sound, um, we tried, and some people use a uh, pop filter with the Yeti or the Snowball. Blue actually has developed, there's actually kind of some shielding in the Yeti and the Snowball to help reduce that um, because we know that they're going to be used very versely in very, a wide audience that may or may not know about a pop filter. So we did try to kind of counteract that. But for people who are still getting it or need to be up close on the mic for voiceover projects and narratives, the pop filter, our pop filter, or another pop filter is a good accessory if you're getting that feedback either from people who are listening or when you play it back and you're like, I don't like how when I say certain words, it, it pops into the mic. So that's a pop filter. Mm -hmm. um, and then another accessory... Um, our shock mounts. Right. So I don't know if you guys get any questions about that or yeah, occasionally. Or, or yeah, yeah, I can hold up mine. I I know you can't see us live, Hillary, but I can hold up my shock mount here. Rick, you can switch. Uh, yeah, I'm on and you. what I've done is, uh, I've modified the ringer and added the blue Yeti to it. Yeah, and one thing you'll notice as you're looking at the shock mount and all the mics and everything that Yeti that that Blue does is they have some of the best industrial designers around. The stuff just looks cool. Um, kind of has that Buck Rogers '50s look almost, but it's just really cool. The all the old time mics and just some really nice mm -hmm. designs. Every, when people see your stuff, everybody immediately goes, "Wow, that's kind of cool." Um, yeah, it makes us very distinctive. It, we're easy to pick out, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, but and the, the quality, the quality of the the workmanship that Rick, you know, Rick just mentioned, it the the ringer, the the shock mount ringer that I have, it's it's sturdy, it's built all of metal, and it, you know, for a couple of dollars, I think maybe for $10 at at one of those hardware stores, I was able to adapt the the shock mount for the Yeti because I don't believe you guys make a shock mount for We the do Yeti. now. We oh, do. It's do. called Radius. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, well, so the, the, the ringer goes for the snowball, and then Radius is kind of like a ringer but laid horizontal mm -hmm. with actually a screw in the middle, um, specifically a design to go in the threads on the bottom of Yeti and Yeti Pro. So we, we do oh. make, and for, and for people who may not be familiar, what a shock mount does is it suspends the mic so that any vibrations from the table mm -hmm. or any... Maybe the computer fan or an air conditioner. There's vibrations that go through physical surfaces that cause a rumble within the mic. Mm -hmm. It's just physics. And what a shock mount does is it shields that, it suspends it um, through bands or, or, or different materials that keep those vibrations out of your audio. Yeah, that's great. Well, we are yeah, just about great. at the looks, end uh... of our show here. Um, Colleen, any last questions in the chat room? No, I, I don't see any questions. I do notice a comment that some, uh, I believe Diane made about the fact that what's neat, what's also neat about the Yeti for her is that not only can she add a, her monitor headphones to it, but there's also a mute button. So, for example, when she's doing webinars, etc., and she's doing a lot of typing while she's delivering or facilitating, she can mute herself so that the audience doesn't hear all of that clicking sounds of her keyboard, et cetera. And, and or if she has to cough or sneeze, it's easily accessible. You can just, you know, press that mute button. Yeah. Also, one thing, I don't know if, if anyone noticed, but when Hillary picked up her blue, the handling noise is pretty low. Uh, you weren't hearing a lot of ruffling, just rustling, just a small amount of noise. And it was pretty. And when she had it up in the air, it was, it was quiet again. So mm -hmm. that's actually for that price microphone and that size and by the way if 
when you do have the Yeti, it's quite hefty. It, it weighs about three pounds. Um, I think it's five with the stand. So it's it's a pretty robust microphone. You're not getting a cheap piece of, of metal. So definitely, definitely a, a good buy, real good e-learning kind of mic, voiceover mic. Um, and you can use it for scenarios, interviews, anything that you might be doing. Great mic to have. And can I mention one more thing sure. just because we're seeing this? Um, Yeti is a side address microphone. So what a lot of people were seeing, so if you have a Yeti or you're going to buy a Yeti, um, do make sure you're talking into the side of it and not directly into the top. The capsules face out. So we always say to talk into the blue logo or to the sides of it. Um, we're just Three. noticing that a lot of people are talking into the top, which seems natural, um, but it, their capsules are actually facing out to the side. So be sure that you're talking into the side of your Yeti and not the top. Right. Do That's you have that, that image, Rick? I think I sent you the link. Uh, I do not. Okay, I will I put have, it out there the... on Twitter, and I will also put it out there in the chat room for anyone who's uh, viewing live how to correctly use, because, in fact, I'll, I'll admit on, online, on air, that I was one of those folks who was using <laughs> my Yeti incorrectly originally. You I was were? speaking into the top of it. So I think a lot of a people do that. that we, I'm sorry? I think a lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, and, and, and there's also, I believe, I'm going to tweet this out, Hillary, because you sent me the link. Um, there's a, a discount or a coupon code or, or some uh, discount for buying the Tiki, the, the, um, the blue Tiki microphone. So I'll tweet that, tweet that out as well. So if you're looking for that uh, and you're watching the show archive, just do a search on hashtag eLearnChat and you'll be able to find it. That's great. And yeah, and Tiki is our, our Skype mic, so it, it does noise canceling. So not mm. maybe something for a voiceover, but if you do a lot of Skype calls or Skype interviews, Tiki is our noise canceling, our brand new noise canceling mic for, for kind of VOIP chat. Oh, I had one question. Um, people are asking, do you have any headset microphones mm -hmm. or any, any in the works? Um, we do not. Okay. Nope. Right now we're we're sticking to mainly USB, kind of the professional USB and and iOS. Okay. But I can I will mention it to R and D. Yeah, I don't know how many people are looking for that, but some people are looking for for headset mics because they're convenient. You don't get any any kind of uh, of sound issues. It's always right on task with you, on target with you because it moves with you. So that's why some people like those. And and a lot of the headset mics just aren't all that comfortable. Um, and that's, I think that's why we went to USB first is so that it could be stationary. You wouldn't have to wear any gear. Mm -hmm. It was just in front of you um, and kind of to develop with those studio features. A headset mic wasn't kind of conducive for the vision we had for the, for the USB line, um, like you said. So we kind of wanted to give that freedom without the, the headgear. But That sounds great. Can you tell us where you guys are going to be? Are you going to any shows? Are you going to be presenting anywhere? Um, I think our next shows, we will be, oh, we will, we'll be at, um, Lollapalooza coming up, um, to talk to artists. Like I said, the musician side is very important. And then come January in CES, stay tuned because that's when we'll be making a few more new product announcements. That sounds fun. Mm hmm Always fun. Well, anyway, Hillary, a real pleasure having you today. And I've got, Thank I'm you guys. definitely going to go up and visit you guys. I'll give you a call and one of these days we can arrange a site visit. I mean, it's, it's like a kid in a candy store. That sounds real fun. You're going to have to come yeah, to the studio and try out the bottle. That sounds great. Oh, I, I can imagine what that sounds like. <laughs> that sounds cool. Well, anyway, well, Hillary, again, thanks a lot for being there. And if um, uh, we'll post any questions we have out to you and maybe uh, through Twitter. Are you on Twitter? Absolutely. You can okay. actually contact us directly at Blue Microphones. Um, plural, so blue microphones, one word on Twitter, and I will be sure any questions from today or if it's archived, send any questions to blue micro at blue microphones, and we will get it answered. That sounds good. Yeah, by the way, I made a mistake. Really I was tweeting out the show, and I put blue microphone. I, I missed the S, so yeah. I will remember that. Yeah, and you guys have a really great Pinterest website, a Pinterest site. So, how? What's the link to your Pinterest site? I believe it's just Pinterest backslash. Forward blue microphones. Blue microphones, yeah. So if you're interested in uh, seeing more of the blue products, go to their Pinterest page. And some of the stuff that Hillary talked about today, including an image of how to use the Yeti correctly. And there's also a comparison chart for several of the microphones, the USB microphones that she 
profiled in our conversation today, you can go on there and see a side-by-side -side comparison as well as uh, I believe it's available also on the Blue Mic uh, website. So thank you so much, Hillary, for joining us. It was great. Thank and, you, guys. Um, you, you did a great job of explaining some of the differences with your products, etc. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, mm -hmm. our, our pleasure. And thanks for taking time out of your day and getting up early, mm -hmm. as we all do. Um, anyway, you have a great one. And um, for all of you guys in the chat room, thanks for being there. And if you're watching the recording, uh, again, thanks for being there. By the way, Hillary, this will be up on YouTube.com slash RelateCasts. So I'll send you the link as soon as it's up. It'll probably be up a little bit later this morning. Sounds good. All right, Thanks, guys, Hillary. everyone, you guys have a good one, and we'll see you next week on eLearn Chat. Take care, everyone.